Libor. That was fantastic. Um, welcome to our service this morning for the first Sunday after the Epiphany when we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Uh, our reader today is Anne Sheets. The Hallbergs will be sharing their responses, and Anne Gwynn will, and, and the Hallbergs will share in the psalm, and Ellen Hume will lead us in the prayers of the people. So a reminder that if you're not speaking, uh, we ask you to be on mute, um, but share the responses uh, on mute and participate fully, sing along at home. Um, uh, we have uh, two to uh, hymns as well as an anthem that Vanessa is going to sing live for us. And now we'll begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship. Having a little bit issue. Or we can't hear it. Can you hear it now? Okay, uh, Libor, now you're okay. You're off mute now. Maybe we should maybe we should just continue with the collect. Yeah, and, okay, we'll just continue with the collect. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, 
Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. The first lesson comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a vast waste. Darkness covered the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the water. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good. And he separated light from darkness. He called the light day and the darkness night. So evening came and morning came. It was the first day. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 29. Let us read responsively by whole verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a wild, wild, wild ox. ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The, the voice, voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord, the Lord sits enthroned above the floods. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second gospel lesson comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism in token of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and everyone flocked to him from the countryside of Judea and the city of Jerusalem, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. John was dressed in a rough coat of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. And he fed on locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, After me comes one mightier than I am, whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and unfasten. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It was at this time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. As he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens break open and the spirit descend on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son and you I take delight. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, over the course of the past dramatic week, we have jumped into light speed from last Sunday's focus on the wise men's visit to Bethlehem, bringing their gifts to the baby Jesus, to today and his baptism in the Jordan. By the time we meet him today, Jesus is thought to be as much as 30 years old. So that's quite the jump forward in time. According to Matthew's gospel, Jesus has been through a lot since the visit of the wise men. He was almost killed by a deranged tyrant, King Herod. He traveled hundreds of miles to Egypt to live as a refugee. His parents could not return to their paternal birthplace because even the new ruler of Judea had, well, insecurity issues, as rulers sometimes do. So they settled in Nazareth. And now, a few decades later, Jesus travels to be baptized by John in the Jordan. 
You'd think the Gospels would give us more details of what happened in Jesus' life in between, but mostly those are hidden. And we read absolutely nothing in the Gospels of Jesus' life from the time he was 12 until his baptism at age 30. In fact, Mark's Gospel, which we are hearing this morning, it opens with the story of Jesus' baptism, and it tells us nothing of his young life or his birth. Therefore, we don't know what led Jesus to be baptized by John. But that's a question that theologians have struggled with since the earliest days of the church. And even if you read the other Gospels, the, the Gospels themselves struggle with it. Because why would Jesus undergo baptism to forgive sins if he were sinless, as tradition has always said? I don't know if any of you ever watched the TV show Young Sheldon, but, you know, Sheldon is not religious, he, and he hates going to church, but it seems like a question he would ask in church, you, you know, uh, um, if this were to come up. Why on earth, if Jesus is sinless, would he have to, uh, would he have to be baptized? Well, there are, you know, a number of answers or proposals. First, it could be that Jesus didn't actually think of himself as sinless, at least in the early years of his life. Or some have suggested that maybe he intended to become a follower of John the Baptist, who had made a name for himself as a prophet when Jesus was still a humble carpenter. Or maybe, maybe Jesus meant to transform the meaning and purpose of baptism, transforming it from a singular focus on the forgiveness of sins as it had been for John, into something more, something even more meaningful, more profound, and more of God. In a way, Jesus' baptism ends up being much like the visit of the wise men last week. Their visit was the recognition of Jesus as king and as God's son. And now today, in the descent of the Holy Spirit, a voice coming from heaven, God's voice, says the same thing. You are my beloved son, and you I take delight. Or in other translations, in you I am well pleased. According to each of the Gospels, it is only after this empowering moment that Jesus begins his ministry, teaching and healing and transforming the world. Before... Well, he seems to have lived a quiet and even private life, one that is not written about or recorded or even remembered. But after those heavens broke open, Jesus broke into the world. What's interesting, though, is that as much as I think Jesus transformed the meaning of baptism from a singular focus on the forgiveness of sins, as it had been under John, for much of the last 2,000 years, the church has sort of held on to that older understanding for the rest of us. Both the sins and the missteps that we perpetrate ourselves, as well as the original sin that we inherit by virtue of being alive. Now, you, don't, you all don't know me so well yet, but I don't tend to talk about or focus on original sin very much. That's not my sort of my first uh, line of uh, thought. But sometimes, I guess, it becomes obvious. Sometimes it's clear that we do have an inherent propensity to sin, to hurt, and to rebel, much as we would like it to be otherwise. Sometimes, oftentimes, we worry about ourselves more than our neighbors, and we hoard and steal and hold on for ourselves rather than sharing and growing, letting go and understanding. Sometimes we hurt and even kill instead of heal and give life. What else can explain the events of this past horrific week? 
angry mobs descending on the Capitol, intent on attacking and overturning American democracy. They killed, they robbed, they chanted USA, 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 while demonstrating complete disregard and antipathy and even hatred for everything the United States at its best stands for. There are so many images of the past week, but the ones that stand out for me include Confederate flags carried through the Capitol and people wearing sweatshirts that read Camp Auschwitz and underneath a skull, the phrase work brings freedom, a translation of the repellent and disgusting Arbeit macht frei. Some at the same time carried signs saying, Jesus saves. Let's be clear. Our nation fought a horrific war pitting brothers against each other to end the Confederacy and the slavery it enshrined. 80 years later, we and the world fought another war to defeat the ideology of hatred and evil that was incarnated by Auschwitz. Those images and slogans and beliefs have absolutely nothing to do with America and most certainly nothing to do with Jesus or God, who does indeed save. God saves us from those evil racist ideologies. On Wednesday, which was the actual feast of the Epiphany, the day when we Christians celebrate Christ's love and light being manifest to the world, Rather than seeing that bright love and light, we saw the Republican Vice President of the United States and the Democratic Speaker of the House ushered to safety as mobs broke through the windows and doors and forced their way into the legislative chambers. We saw members of Congress being forced to wear gas masks and use furniture to barricade doors. We saw Capitol Police with guns drawn at the doors of the House of the Representatives floor to prevent violent entry. And we saw police injured and killed defending our nation's leaders. If ever there were a display of contempt for the United States, for democracy, for God, and for the light and love of Christ. It is this disgusting, deadly display of racism and violence and contempt for anyone who looks or thinks or votes differently. This display is precise, the precise opposite of what it means to be an American. And for us gathered this morning, even more the opposite of what it means to be Christian, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Thus, it is clear that sin is very much alive and real in the big and small ways that we all know in our lives, and more profoundly in the enactment of evil and hatred on Wednesday in Washington sin for which we all need to seek forgiveness. But remember how I said at the beginning that I think Jesus transformed the meaning of baptism so that it was not only about the forgiveness of sin. Well, just as it was transformed for Jesus, for us too, Baptism is about being named sons and daughters of God, and thus being strengthened and empowered 
to live lives of transformation, lives of healing, and lives of justice. Just as it was for Jesus when the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And so we can and we should and we must seek forgiveness. But also, and just as importantly, we can and we should and we must stand against the evil powers of our world and sometimes the evil powers of our own hearts and souls. That's a lot of what I talk about with families when we meet for baptismal preparation. We talk about all the aspects of baptism and how the promises we make, if we take them seriously, will direct and transform our lives in the same way that I believe baptism directed and transformed Jesus' life. Because when we are baptized, we make promises about turning our backs on sin and evil and temptation. We promise to oppose events and impulses like those that consume the insurrectionist mobs. And we make promises about putting our trust in something, in someone else, in God, in God's grace and love, patterning our lives on Jesus. We promise to share the good news of the gospel and to love one another in the same way that God loves us. We promise to seek and serve Christ in each other and to strive for justice and peace among all people and to respect the dignity of every human being. None of that, I think, was on the minds of the terrorists in Washington this week. But that is our deepest and truest calling each and every day as Christians. Because we follow Christ and because we were baptized into his life, because the Holy Spirit descended upon us, exactly as the Spirit did on Jesus, declaring, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter, with you I take delight, with you I am well pleased. Being a son or daughter of God comes with a profound and a challenging responsibility, just as it did for Jesus. It's about living and following, sometimes sacrificing, always being the people of God, being truly the body of Christ, the real life presence of God in the world today. And you know what? That is exactly who our church and our nation and our world desperately, desperately need us to be now, tomorrow, and always. Can we be that people? Can we live that life together? To God be the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we gather by the river Where bright angels' feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Yeah.
reach the shining river. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with our melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather by the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints by the that flows by the throne of God, that flows by the throne of God. Now let us confess our faith in God. We believe, we believe in, in God, God the Father, Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Prayers of the People. In the waters of baptism, we were called to be God's children and to minister to one another. Let us therefore pray for ourselves, for one another, and for all those in need of our prayers, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church that it may stand fast in the faith to which it has been called. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Alan and Gail, our bishops, Matthew, our vicar, and all those who share in the baptism of Christ and bring the gospel to the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, that our conflicts cease and that peace may reign in this new year. We pray for the president of the United States the president-elect and the Congress, that they may work together for the well-being of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all Christians who have been baptized into the one family of faith, that our lives may reflect the forgiveness and love which was first shown to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all who are blind to the injustices of the world, that our eyes may be opened and that we may together work for an end to oppression and injustice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick in body, mind, and spirit. We remember all suffering from the, we remember all who are suffering from the coronavirus, those who are ill, those who are afraid and those who mourn. We pray for doctors, nurses, and medical professionals. We pray for scientists developing treatments and vaccines. We pray for those suffering from hunger, isolation, and joblessness. We pray for those beloved of our community who have asked for our prayers. Nancy, Nani, Karen, Larry, Holmes, Gino, Jeffrey, Kent, Sharon, Diane, Vesna, Stella, Patricia, David, Jim, and Carol, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the faithful who have gone before us that we may follow the example of their lives and be reunited with them in the joy of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, you know our thoughts and deeds better than we ourselves. 
Accept the prayers we offer now and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In union, In union blessed, blessed Jesus, Jesus, with the faithful, faithful gathered this day, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and, and all the blessings of this life, for, for the, the redemption, redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in word and sacrament. And, and since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, until by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Grant us a place at your heavenly table where we shall eat of the eternal manna and drink, and drink of the river of your pleasure forevermore. Hear us for your own name's sake. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with, with you. And we'll share the peace with one another. It's great to see you this morning. And we'll try with a hymn. Now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the river Jordan, 
pour out that spirit upon you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. Amen. May God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us rejoice in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today for, for our worship. It's great to see you. So thank you to Libor for uh, playing and Vanessa for singing and our choir and uh, our readers and intercessors. It was good to uh, spend this time with you. So I'm going to turn off the recording, but we can stay on for coffee hour. <laughs>